it was as if you were an actor and if you were trying to put on a jacket and outfit that a seam was ripped right and if that seam is just a little bit rift you, it, it's like a fire hydrant of emotion and energy and being just shooting out of that stitch because there was the ability it was a crack right it was it was it was where the fabric faltered a little bit and there was no way to sort of alleviate that pressure that where we we have so much of these things going on and especially in the last year or two it's been really difficult to kind of like find that peace podcast time everybody mike tech studio podcast episode number 35 mental health in the creative space all right everybody thanks for tuning in to this episode this episode of the mike tech studios podcast this is kind of going to be an interesting topic because it deals with creatives and their mental health and uh, some, I think, some candid moments <laughs> that have been going on uh, for me and around me and in my orbit that uh, I feel personally and professionally would really be um, not only conducive to the creative environment of those that actually listen to this, but I also believe that it's something that if we're a little bit more honest about and... Honestly, hopefully it just hits on the right nodes, if you will, for those that are going through maybe similar circumstances in the creative field. I mean, I don't want to limit it that just just to the folks that are listening to this like that. But, uh, well, let's just get into the thick of the thing, shall we? So first off, as many of you know, I've been podcasting. I want to say this is probably our uh, technically second season, but I'd say three years that I've been podcasting. I have a couple of different podcast series. Uh, sometimes there is a flurry of content that comes out. And then sometimes, depending on whatever is going on with personal life or that content or whatever it may be, there's a little bit of a pause, right? So earlier this year, I had a lot, or actually at the very end of last year, I had a batch of probably about a half a dozen guests and they're really good episodes. I was able to release a couple of those and a few of them are still in the editing vault uh, in different forms of either being finally edited or uh, still on the cutting room floor being ready to go. I have a very simple setup because again, uh, it's not like there's a, 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 a big need uh, for <laughs> this type of thing that I do, uh, but it has definitely grown. And uh, as a creative, you got to make a lot of interesting and also very hard decisions. And I know a lot of folks had to do that between 2020 and 2021. And as a creative, it was kind of difficult to be creative, kind of in the middle of, a pop, uh, in the, middle of the apocalypse. It, it's kind of hard to uh, figure out how you're going to pitch somebody's marketing or look for work when everybody's closing their doors. And uh, essentially, you're not really seen as either an essential worker or a necessary cog in that organization's wheel you know when people lay you off what's to stop them from doing it again and there's been a lot of personal setbacks for me <clears throat> one i've tried to get rid of whatever this lingering uh chest cold and, and i guess lack of voice that i've had for a, a little while which is why most of you folks haven't really heard from me i don't really want to have a, a great episode with a guest and then all of a sudden try to do uh you know post edit uh, some of the voiceovers and the voice is just sounding completely off i mean you can hear it in my voice if not uh, and you're just tuning in for the first time this is not how i normally sound uh but it is what it is so pressing forward though I was really moved to put this in between some of the other planned content that should have been out a little bit earlier because when I started this content originally, it was based on folks around me that could probably get a leg up and not have to go through the same murkiness that I personally had to go through and being able to have a platform with creatives that could share their methodologies, their messages, their, their work, right? And being able to have kind of a comfortable space to do that and grow and really be focused on that, not on politics, not on health, not on beliefs, not on, you know, any of these other things that really misconstrue that narrative and that notion of, of really that raw desire, right? So with many 
many people that I know personally in the creative field that have either been affected by recent pandemic events, that have been affected by political events, that have been affected by shutdowns, uh, family circumstances, violence. You know, I, I was speaking to one of my uh, podcast contacts and I always would say, dear friend, if they're listening right now, hey, I'm talking about you. And, um, you know, it's really horrific to hear the amount of behind the scenes violence that people are going through and still trying to keep a uh, straight face and keep their work going. And it's relatable as well. Uh, and I also have a very near and dear friend of mine uh, and also of the podcast who has a family member of theirs that has just failing uh, physical health. And it's very hard to watch somebody deteriorate in front of you on a daily basis. And it actually brought me to tears uh, a couple of times seeing this during uh, some, some video chats and, and some heart to hearts that, you know, we had had in that particular circumstance. So I'm saying all this to those that are listening, because one of the last uh, episodes that I did do are also for motivation. And I do this content, not necessarily just for folks that are tuning in and that are listening and that could use that. But sometimes I listen to my own stuff, too. Um, I know it sounds a little you know, potentially facetious to sit there and listen to your stuff. But sometimes you have to listen to very golden nugget opportunity times that you really nailed on something that was solid, right? There's been a couple of times in my life that I, I want to share uh, with the with the people listening that I think that you could relate to and then kind of wrap up and, and go from there. Is that fair enough? We'll, we'll, we'll chat a little bit about the topic. I'll give you a little bit of my personal insight and my experiences, and we'll go from there. So I've shared this story a couple of times. I'm not sure if I've done this on the podcast recently, but one of the uh, most difficult things to do as a creative is to break in. You don't know whether to just uh, not charge anything and create a portfolio and uh, have that ramen noodle and futon lifestyle for a little bit until... Uh, people start to understand the value of your worth. And, and then you actually have a couple of interesting projects that show and shine to what you do. I actually started doing this podcast platform because it was a great lateral for marketing. Uh, one of my personal aspirations when I was a kid and uh, one of my very good friends, Kenan Butler, reminded me of that the other day, uh, was that I wanted to be a video game developer, believe it or not, because I love the aspect, I love video games, uh, or I did, at least the older ones I used to play. Can't say I relate to all of them growing up now, but that's what happens as you get older. But he was really excited to look forward to still, if I can dig back into that treasure trove of half a dozen projects that have been started and, and in really good places, some of them, that he'd like to be able to play them, right? And there was that passion that came from something that you really enjoy or something that you really thought that you were good at and you don't necessarily have the support <laughs> to 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 have those things and there's always going to be uh haters around you unfortunately that just honestly don't believe what you believe in or think that you're as good as you uh a a as you think and you know i say that because somebody had asked me the other day you know i had shared one of the episodes that I did, it actually used to, that had a friend of mine, Kenan, in it. And they'd ask me, you know, I hear you talk so much about him. Why is he so awesome? Like, what is it really about him that makes him so this or that? And I just, I, I mean, I kind of want to hear you brag a little bit, but I'm also, you know, I'm also interested in myself personally. I was like, you know, that's, that's interesting that it comes off as bragging, you know, rather than just if somebody's really good at what they're doing, just being like, oh man, they're, they're leaps and bounds ahead. And this could be people that are musically inclined. There, there is a couple of folks I follow on YouTube. I forget the girl's name. She is phenomenal. And she covers very common TV themes, anime themes, video game themes, movie themes, and she's great at it but I cannot tell you how long it probably took her to get to that point where she's able to just sit comfortably on uh, YouTube and basically blend all of the different aspects of a song together and she's you know seven or eight uh, screens where she had to be comfortable with herself the way she looks she has to be comfortable with the way she plays she's gonna be way confident into how she plays you know I just found it interesting that I had to prove to somebody that Kenan was as great as he was just as if when I was uh, starting back as a freelancer as a designer people well you know let's just do this as a proving ground and then let's let's see how you do 
it's funny fast forwarding to, to present day and being able to have somebody take a look at some of the work that you've done as a personal pet uh, project or uh, smaller projects here or there and immediately being able to see your worth and wanting to work with you actually driving hours away to sit and meet with you to see if there's uh, you know what what can be done to work together moving forward if there's if there's that opportunity to support their brand or organization that's awesome that's really, really powerful, but it didn't happen overnight. So there's a story, a coming of age tale, if you will, of just certain things like that, that where people don't necessarily believe what you believe, right? So at the time, this was quite some time ago, uh, at least 10 years ago now, I was starting out trying to eke out an existence, finding a job, really, really talking to people in between the retail job that I was doing folding clothes. And I was dating a girl at the time, which I really don't care where she is right now, um, because a lot of bad things happened there. And as a creative, uh, you have to filter that out and you have to be able to put that into that, that, that level of effort and energy or whatever it is, it's got to come out somewhere. Some people work out, some people paint, some people box, it's got to have that outlet, right? And as creatives, we feel everything, you know, it was it was as if you were an actor. And if you were trying to put on a jacket and outfit, that a seam was ripped, right? And if that seam is just a little bit rift, you, it, it's like a fire hydrant of emotion and energy and being just shooting out of that stitch because there was the ability, it was a crack, right? It was it was it was where the fabric faltered a little bit. And there was no way to sort of alleviate that pressure that where we we have have so much of these things going on and especially in the last year or two it's been really difficult to kind of like find that peace right so we'll come back to that point about finding a peace uh, finding your peace in a second so i'm folding clothes and i'm really i believe truly 100 percent what i do is great i know that i'm going to be profitable i know that people will love my work and they will love being able to say that they've worked with me, you know, at that time. And I'm handing out business cards. You know, you talk to somebody, once you realize that they're like in a comfortable place, I'm, I'm just trying to do whatever I can to just start out, right? This is long before social media was really, you know, double down and influencers and all that other stuff. This is something that I've heard over the years from quite a few different places. This would have been from family members. This would have been from friends. This would have been from partners. And by partners, I don't mean business partners. I mean like, you know, romantic. Somebody who you would want to spend the rest of your life with, right? And in this particular circumstance, this very damaged circumstance, this individual said to me, and I will never ever forget this, you know, because I was just like, you know, this is going to work out and this and that. And they said, you know what? I think you're going to do great, but you know, I think it's going to take a while or something like that. And I'm not sure, you know, I don't think you're really a graphic designer. I really don't think that this is it. So, you know, when you're successful, and that was the key thing, when you're successful, I will be there cheering with, cheering for you on and being there waiting for you at the finish line. And I just remember saying and immediately going, well, if you're if, if you're just going to step out and be there at the finish line, I don't need you. Uh, why? Why would I wait for somebody? Why would I want to be around somebody who doesn't believe in me in the futon and ramen noodle years to get to that point where when it comes to success, if you truly believe that that's where you're going to find me? Why wouldn't you stick with me till the end of that? Why that journey is just as valuable and important and foundational building and bonding. And, and I mean, that that's like construction adhesive, right? Like, you know, it's going to take a hurricane to try to shift that and put a few cracks in that. Why do I need you? And it was just a real solemn moment, you know, between us because it was a, it was a reality check for how much investment emotionally that they really believed in me. And it just reminded me of that when somebody said, you know what, just really just prove to me that this talent, this, this, this hurricane, this tsunami of artistic and vocal expression known as Kenan Butler proved to me that he's as amazing as you say he is. And I laugh because it reminded me of that story. And it reminded me of all the circumstances of us as creatives and all the contacts that I have as fine artists and actors and voiceover talent and painters. It's been very difficult to kind of connect 
you know, a lot of these art shows is where you get a, you get to really network with the people that kind of do maybe something similar that you do, or it gives you an idea to go in a different direction and, uh, and, and, and finding yourself or finding things that you forgot about that you may have a connection with, with somebody else, right? It's been a real dark time to, to try to be funny, to try to have that outlet, to try to have the ability to still keep on doing what you do and doing what you love and still being profitable and still not letting those ripped stitches at the seam just burst out and and having uh, that breakdown. You know, I will tell you, you know, personally, hearing stories from folks, again, in the podcasting space or in the creative space that are going through similar circumstances that I had to go through between 2020 and especially between the beginning of 2021 up until a couple of months ago. It's heartbreaking, but it's also strengthening knowing that we're in this together, right? So this content this series is based on the experiences that I have endured, that I have enjoyed, that I pulled my hair out at night figuring, how am I going to figure this out? Or how am I going to get around this? Or this, this client bailed on me because I didn't have a statement of work signed off. I allowed that. How can I create a platform where people that are also going to be starting up doing the same thing, maybe not even in the same industry, but in the same space, right? Just being protected. How can I alleviate that issue, right? Where can I tell that story? And here it is, the podcasting space, even with a broken voice the way that I am now. Um, it was interesting because when we go back to finding your peace, if you're not at peace with whatever choices that you had to make in life, and trust me, we have to make a lot of real hard decisions. I have made some very, very difficult decisions that other people in their own narrative uh, within the last year or so may see in a completely different way because they are not sitting in your shoes. To be able to have that discussion when you go, what were you really thinking? What, what did this look like from your vantage point? I've also had people outright blatantly lie to my face, lie on legal paperwork, lie to their friends or family about a circumstance that happened for their own well-being and safety, and then pretend to reach out like nothing happened. That really does affect your mental health. And because they know how to game certain systems or take advantage of certain things, or know as a creative that they know and, and I was and I was watching uh, some highlights of Michael Jordan, one of the greatest basketball players in history, Larry Bird, and watching how they would get into their opponents' heads, right? And if you know somebody's really good, but you trash talk them and you're constantly just beating on them, you're gonna break them at some point, and they're not gonna want to do it anymore. They're gonna their shots gonna be off. They're gonna be angry. They're gonna be heated, and it's gonna be emotional rather than actually focusing on what they're amazing at, which is trying to take you out on the court, right? And you know, it is a tactic that enemies will do. You know, uh, I was watching uh, something that I had watched probably a year or so ago. Uh, I, I think it's the founder, uh, Michael Keaton, uh, basically portrays Ray Kroc. And it is the coming of age tale as every, uh, you know, major success story has about how McDonald's came to be, right? How McDonald's came to be, you know, newsflash, you know, sorry to, to, to break the news to anybody who hasn't seen it. It's not a happy story. Um, it, it is in short, just a reminder of where you are in the thick of the things. And I remember Ray Kroc, this is Michael Keaton's character. At the end, he takes advantage of the circumstance. For those of you that haven't watched it, you know, I, I definitely recommend it. It's on Netflix now, probably a couple of other platforms. It's probably still on Netflix. You should check. As of this recording, it's there. If not, I apologize if you listen to this a year from now or, or so. But when he basically took advantage of the situation at the end of the, this is Ray Kroc's character, at the end of the movie, you know, the, the McDonald's brothers asked him why. It was like listening to a shark. It was like listening to a human shark. Why, why are you doing this or whatever it is? And, and Ray Kroc goes, you know what? Because I have the willingness to succeed. He said, I am the type of person where if I see my competitor drowning, I shove a hose in their mouth. Can you say that you could do the same? And one of these two brothers, Mac McDonald, kind of was there he, was, he had he had heart issues he had health concerns and stuff like that clutching his heart he's sweating and he's going 
no, no, I, I can't say that I, I can or that I want to do that. And he goes, well, then there's a difference. And that is the difference where if you're not a good business person, that may be an okay thing because at the end of the day, you want to be able to look at yourself in the mirror at night with the decisions that you made. You've made some hard decisions. And again, those narratives that we have of ourselves, they may change depending on who wants to tell that story. But who's going to know the story better than the person who is actually there? Who's going to know the person who's going to know the story better than the one that actually went through it? And you're never going to know that story unless you ask. And there is a reason why, you know, I have stuck with doing creative work over the years, because although, yes, there might be other opportunities that are higher paying and there might be other more glamorous titles. But at the end of the day, I would much rather try to find smaller clients that allow me to do what it is that I want to do and can express the work that a way that I want to express and trust me for the type of work that they rather than go to certain contracts that I've gone to personally where I, I've made good money. I'm making great money. I, I look great. I'm walking into the office. I'm on the fifth floor. I got a corner office. It's great. And I have a boss that is throwing a trash can against the door and cursing and swearing while I'm on the phone with clients as a, as, you know, as, as a uh, uh, project coordinator, right? Trying to basically professionally babysit his clients that are behind or not paying money and they hear these things or walking into an office telling me that uh, the this plant should be sitting here or I want these windows open and on and meanwhile, those windows are closed because in the state of Florida, I don't know if you know, but it's called the Sunshine State. So that means it's everywhere. <laughs> if you've ever played Super Mario and you remember that bouncing sun, it would like come all the way down and almost try to hit you. And it's a one hit death, right? Uh, that's Florida for you. Florida is like, it's got the sun like 10 feet away from you at all times. It's hot. It's a little bit bright, right? You, you could have like permanent sunglasses on essentially. So I didn't appreciate having to have a severe migraine and a, sin and a sinus and a pressure headache every single day from staring at the glare of the screen, trying to make phone calls because that's what my boss wanted. It was not a mentally healthy place to be. And I share all these things because, you know, there's been a lot more of an uptick about uh, Simone Biles, uh, you know, pulling out of the, the finals for gymnastics and for the Olympics because of her, her mental health, rather, and just seeing a monumental level of support for doing so. Why? Because there's a lot of things. I mean, the girl, she's beautiful. She's amazing at what she does. You see her. She's full of smiles. But do you know what it costs to put that smile on? in front of the cameras with accusations of the stuff with her trainer and, and all, I, I don't want to get into it, but do you, do you know what it physically takes every single day to put on a happy face like that? It's very difficult to do. And she, it's a different type of creative and a different type of artist, right? But she is a performer. She is a performer. She is an athlete. Okay. It's still in the entertainment realm. It's still an art and she's still, still cannot have that peace because the overwhelming pressure people won't let her do her thing. And that's an Olympic level athlete, right? How many of us can say we've been at the, uh, in the Olympics? How many of us can say that if you're watching football <laughs> or basketball and you're screaming at the TV, well, you're out of breath going from the couch to the refrigerator or to the bowl of Cheetos, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. And when somebody tries to come after your peace, whatever is going on, money, power, fame, respect, reputation, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it for yourself. It's not worth it for your well-being. It's not worth it for your children or somebody else's children. You know, I've been in circumstances that myself uh, where, you know, as you get older, people that you're going to be involved with, they have children. And it's very difficult to be a lame duck parent. Uh, when you are in those circumstances because you don't have that place, you don't have that purpose, kind of brings you back to being that freelance startup where you're trying to prove yourself as being worthwhile, being noteworthy, being worth somebody's time, effort, and investment. 
right? Ooh, you like that, huh? You like coming back around like that. So here's the thing, and I want everybody to take a moment and focus in on this for your mental health. If you have people, if you have circumstances, if you have jobs that compromise the fact that you would come home or come back to wherever you are, it could be a shelter, it could be your car, it could be a couch, it could be wherever it is that you are calling home at this particular point in time. And if you don't have a plan of attack to get out of that circumstance for you to be in a mentally healthy situation, not only for yourself, but so that you can be able there to catch others in your orbit as well. This is all organic. You understand that? If somebody, if, if one of my family members, or one of my friends, or one of my very close you know, coworkers, if I'm in those uh, situations, needs me and I am compromised, that's no, that's no better than trying to have a cup that's cracked and filling it up with water and it's spilling all over the floor. You can't hold it. You can't contain it. And guess what? Now you get a bigger mess to clean up on top of that. And I believe that the time with the pandemic has really allowed people to sit down and focus about their self-worth, their value. And you know what? Guess what? When people get laid off, okay, that's going to happen. That is going to happen. That's a part of life. It's a part of life. Money comes and goes. Jobs come and go. But at the end of the day, and I'm quoting somebody here on this, some of these things may not apply to you. Some of these things don't directly apply. One or two apply to me. But I want you to listen to what they do apply to for you and things that you value and that you appreciate. My name is not depression. My name is not pain. My name is not loser. My name is not failure. My name is not degenerate. My name is not bad parent. My name is not bad father, bad son, bad brother, bad aunt, uncle, mother, daughter. My name is not waste. My name is not lazy. My name is Michael. And I want you to think about that and be intentional with your healthy space. We can't solve everything on a daily basis. And it pains me to see people around me and, and physically having to clean up. You know, they having those emotional breakdowns and psychotic episodes or people that go for the throat just because just because it causes somebody else pain. There's going to be people like that in life. But you know what? You know better. You do better. You see better. You are better. You are none of these things as a creative. And there's going to be a lot of people that do not believe in what you do. There's going to be a lot of people that find what you do to be annoying or a waste of time. Or I hear your voice all the time. I'm tired of it. Oh, I said I said to somebody, you know, have you listened to podcasts? Go, no, I really haven't. I said, why? I go, because I listen to your voice enough. <laughs> wow. Wow. I mean, they're honest. I get it. But wow. All right. You know, and just some people are not interested in podcasting. And that's fair. That, 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 that's fair. I understand that. But for that one person that is too close to your creative onus, right? And there's going to be times where as a creative, it looks amazing. It's like, oh, wow, you know, this song came out amazing. This video was great. You have no idea the behind the scenes of Simone, uh, of the Simone Biles situation that that person had to deal with to come to that beautiful song or that beautiful sculpture or that child to get to the point of where they are or that relationship which is, is completely invisible business personal uh, uh people that have been married for 20 30 years there's some rocks that they hit there that is very difficult to deal with somebody for such a very long time and some of us are not okay with where we are as people. And if we're not okay as people and we allow other people to come into our own safe space, to our own peace, they get to get in your ear and they get to adjust your narrative about you. Don't you ever, ever let anybody do that about you. There is something amazing in every single every person's got at least one thing it's your job to tap into it it's your job to double down on it refine it and let other people know this is who i am 
I'm an amazing singer. I'm an amazing sculptor. I'm a great parent. I'm a great healthcare provider. I care for people. I, I, I feed people on a daily basis. That's what gets me going. Or I am very happy about how I do my work. Or if not, I have made peace to the point that this piece is not going to go in my portfolio, but it allowed me to pay my overhead, room and board cost, utilities. It allowed me to put gas in my car for another month, two months. It allowed me to do something exciting. It allowed me to sleep and pay somebody else to worry about doing my social media or doing my editing or uh, answering my calls or being able to hire another employee so I can spend time with my family on Sunday. I can't tell you what it is. I can tell you that you have, and I can tell you that you got to keep that peace. You got to keep focus on it. So if you want to play this over and over again, if you want to share this to somebody else that could use it in the creative space, even if they're not, double down on you. You are never a bad investment until you give up on yourself. If you allow other people to think that you are a failure and you if you if you allow yourself with that alignment of this is what you believe in because somebody else wants to typecast on you, get out of here. Get out of here with that nonsense. Refute that. I, I rebuke that. It, it, it ain't happening. That ain't me. That ain't me. Dale Hughley used to get upset because people call him the N-word at school and this and that. His mother came home. Are you? No. So? Or talking about my mama. Am I? No. So why are you getting upset? Sticks and stones, love. Sticks and stones. Don't worry about it. And that's what happens as creatives. We are so, a lot of us are so sensitive, right? And so emotional because that's what allows our art to permeate through those different platforms. As an actor, as a performer, as a vocal artist, as a musician, as a singer, as a songwriter, as a dancer or a choreographer. How many people have we seen that can't keep a beat to save their life? <laughs> how many how many you see them on youtube and they're famous for being that bad imagine constantly feeling the music constantly feeling the music in your body you feel something you're vibing a little bit and you're like "Ooh, i'm moving i feel it do you know why you're feeling it because that ability to be able to relate to that sound is right there and if you allow people in that right there space they can make that toxic for what you tap into that's yours that's your little superpower right we're all watching these superhero movies and stuff like that that's your superhero power and for those of us that believe i mean again i know that there's different walks of life and different religious beliefs that listen to this but i myself happen to be a christian and i myself do read the good book and unfortunately one of the greatest and, and it happens to be one of my favorite uh <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorite books but um, the whole story of Samson Samson was in a sense the Hercules of the Bible and he was because God had instructed to not cut a hair on his head and Samson well Samson did what anybody else would normally do human in that situation man he enjoyed the fact that he was basically like unstoppable if anybody's ever seen Hercules the, you know the, the the legendary series the incredible journey or whatever it was called with Kevin Sorbo it was kind of like that man you got people that want to swoon at you you're 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 just you're unstoppable people are like what is his power and unfortunately he faltered at a time with this beautiful girl named Delilah and lied to her a couple of times about what his secret was for his strength, right? And they tried, and he was an idiot <laughs> for doing that, but they tried to try to topple him for that. And he was just so haughty that he let go his Achilles heel, if you will, about cutting his hair. And once that happened, immediately, boom, the blessing of God was gone. Boom. Now, even if you have a different walk of life, if you don't believe in, in specifics about Christianity, think of it as just a normal day-to-day -day circumstance that you were dealing with where you knew that you had some secret power, some special power ring or, or some piece of software that was giving you the leg up on your competition. And the moment that you let somebody know what it was, they took it out. They took advantage of knowing of exactly what it was. They took your peace, right? Because you were not 
balance with yourself. You are not okay to be like, no, no, this is how I'm going to live my life. This is the path that I'm going to go down. This is what I'm about. I'm going to be true to myself. And honestly, if Samson was a little bit more honest about that and said, I am a child of God, probably wouldn't have gone that way. He forgot about that. And the same way that us creatives sometimes forget that, you know what? That client may not have no taste at all. But you guess what? You want to know what as well? It's their name on that check or that PayPal or that cash payment that's keeping your lights on. <laughs> so it may not be that great, but guess what? You got to be okay to know, you know what? That's not a piece going to my portfolio, but it is going to my bank account. <laughs> and, you know, that is how you allow yourself to have that peace at night, to have that peace with that problem that you're dealing with at that time. So I really hope this is something that's a good takeaway for those of you that have really been struggling this year, that really been struggling to try to start whatever it is that you're trying to start, or if you've been in a little bit of a hiatus like myself, you know, it was very difficult for me to kind of come to terms that I was not gonna be able to use my wrist for the first three or four months of this year my right wrist. That's, that's my everything wrist. You can't, you know, you can't shower properly with that. You can't use a mouse and keyboard. You can't, I couldn't turn my wrist, uh, for at least the first three or four months. I only started being able to utilize the ability to properly open and close my hand and grab bags and things like that without, you know, crab clawing it in the middle of June. And this is the very first, uh, the very end of July, beginning of August. So for those of you that are guests on the podcast, your content is still coming. I am, look, I'm putting this out there to the waves to everybody. I apologize for the delay. But, you know, sometimes as a creative, you need to be okay. And even as a person, regardless, you need to be okay with yourself before you can step back out and get there and do what you need to do for other people. Because there are a lot of people that want to see you fail. There are a lot of people that want to take what you have just so they feel better about themselves or they don't like the narrative that's being portrayed about them. And you know what? That's something they should think about before they try to take advantage of you. So whatever this takeaway is. Whatever you get out of that, just realize that your mental health is very important as a creative. And I want to double down on a lot of these things moving forward in the podcast, because if you're not OK, you can't be OK for other people. You can't help other people and you're not going to move forward as well. And if you think you're OK, you know, reach out. Sometimes take a listen. Double back on that client or change the type of work that you do. I can tell you what, changing those clients over the years definitely made me feel like a better person. But if you have those same people around you, they're going to bring you down or don't believe in you. It makes a great, great difference when they're not there or when you don't feel uh, their negative, toxic presence in order to be able to be who you are. So those of you that listen to my content after the fact, hey, you can binge it all you want. We're on Spotify. We're on YouTube. Uh, we're on your podcast platform of choice. So if it's a big, major platform, Apple, anywhere, we're there. OK, um, if you have ideas for a next episode, if you're interested, please feel free to reach out podcast at Mike or comment below on any of the uh, available streaming platforms and mediums that we are on. Uh, because it's great. I would love to have some new guests that are also creatives that we can share stories about, you know, what they're working on. If it's something great or beneficial for the community, awesome. Uh, maybe just certain topics or titles if you think would be beneficial for other people uh, listening that you've gone through. By all means, man, reach out. Reach out. I'm happy to talk to you. Let's see what we can do about having, you know, just more content and a great platform to continue building on for folks listening. So check us out. Like I said, MikeTech.tv. We got an awesome new podcast website coming as well, MikeTechStudiosPodcast.com. So take a look out for that and a couple of other goodies that I don't want to spoil yet that you should be looking out for. So it's going to take a little longer than I expected, but hey, that's been 2020 and 2021. So I appreciate your time checking this out and thank you for tuning in to the next episode of the Mike Tech Studios Podcast. Midnight out, folks. Oh.